Tonight, as we continue the 60th anniversary of the Hebgen Lake earthquake, we go inside the park with MTN's Chet Lehman. August 17th, 1959, the peak of the summer season in Yellowstone. The Old Faithful Inn was full. In fact, news reports say a beauty contest was going on that night. Now remember, this 76-foot high log structure was built in 1904, long before earthquake standards. The fireplace here um, kind of twisted on an axis on its axis, um, so that two of the four flues uh, were blocked. Um, certainly, the whole you know, structure kind of swayed. Um, and then in the dining room behind me, uh, part of that chimney um, fell through the roof onto the floor. Luckily, it was nearly midnight, and so there was nobody hurt um, in, the, in, the, in the inn. The dining hall fireplace was repaired immediately, but the main fireplace wouldn't be fixed until 2004. That night, the building was evacuated, and the geothermal features in the park went wild. More than 160 new geysers sprang to life. Even the park's iconic geyser felt the quake. Old Faithful has always remained just that faithful, but that 1959 earthquake did impact this geyser. Before the quake, eruption intervals were between 60 and 65 minutes. Afterwards, 85 to 95 minutes. The good news for tourists are, before the quake, those intervals only lasted a minute and a half to two minutes. Afterwards, four and a half to five. So it does fewer eruptions in the day, putting out more water in each one, and then overall still puts out about the same amount of water. And the next earthquake could do anything, including shut it off. It is a natural feature. You know, someday Old Faithful should actually stop. That's natural for that to happen. The Old Faithful Inn survived, but some of the park's west side roads did not. In fact, a group of campers were trapped at the Indian Creek campground for several days. The Golden Gate area was blocked to the north, and the Gibbon Falls area to the south. Park officials determined they had enough food to last until those roads could be opened. For others, escaping the park became an adventure all in itself. This is the Firehole Canyon Drive. It's a one-way scenic road today. In 1959, this was the main road between West Yellowstone and Old Faithful. When that quake hit, those rocks fell. This road was closed, and that forced the Park Service to use a road that had been abandoned for years to get people out of the area. That was open for the first time in decades, and park visitors were allowed to use it to escape the park, and many did, up a small dirt road with a tiny steel bridge. Uh, and it hadn't been open in decades. It was closed as soon as they had the roads open, and it never would never open again. It would take weeks for some of the park's roads to be reopened, but visitors kept coming just from other entrances. While no buildings were lost to the 1959 quake, it was an eye-opener for Yellowstone. I think that that um, really did um, impact how we manage our historic structures um, as far as making sure that uh, we go back and retrofit these, these buildings uh, to protect them for the future. And anything that we build now, we make sure that it is you know, up to great standards for um, seismic activity. As for effect of another quake on the natural features, new geysers will form and current geysers will cease, just like has been happening in this area for hundreds of thousands of years. In Yellowstone National Park, Chet Lehman, MTN News. All right, thanks, Chet.